So underneath all of this, what the boys' crisis is about is a conflict between our, what I call our genetic heritage, or what might be called our social genetic heritage, and our genetic future, or what might be called our social genetic future. In our genetic heritage, the, the, the message to boys of our genetic heritage was that every society that survived had to figure out a way of making its boys disposable in what two areas? War. War. And what's the other area? Work. And work. We had to make ourselves disposable. The society had to figure out a way of having its boys be trained to be disposable. And the way we trained to be disposable is we got boys to think of themselves as powerful by being disposable. That's pretty tricky, but it was done. We got boys to think of work in such a way as thinking of it as power to earn more money, as opposed to understanding that earning more money was almost always about what you forfeit to earn the money in order to get the power that money brings you. So we train boys basically to feel obligated to earn money that somebody else spent while we died sooner and call that power which is a pretty amazing definition of power. If I went into a workshop on empowering women, which I did for 20 or 30 years, and I said, women, I'm going to teach you how to feel obligated to earn money somebody else spends while you die sooner, women would look at me and have me tossed out of that workshop in a few minutes. Because they would know that that was no definition, definition of power, that they were, uh, they were too smart to buy that definition of power. But that definition of power has basically been socialized into men thinking of ourselves as, OK, the more money we earn, the, the higher up we'll go on the economic ladder, the more power, the, the more status we have.